All right, let's look at number five and six from um, this BC review packet uh, number two on Taylor series FRQs. All right, so number five here says let h be a function having derivatives of all orders for all x greater than zero. Uh, selected values of h and its four first four derivatives are indicated in the table. The function h and these four derivatives are increasing on the interval from one to three. So. This is something important that we're going to have to keep track of here. Uh, part A, write the first degree Taylor polynomial for h about x equals 2 and use it to approximate h of 1.9. Is this approximation greater than or uh, less than uh, h of 1.9? So first thing we can do is we can write um, the first degree Taylor polynomial, which essentially is um, the tangent line equation. and um, what we can all we need to do there is uh, take h of 2 plus the slope times x minus 2 so h of 2 uh, we see is um, 80 and the h prime of 2 is 128 so once we have the order pair and the slope then we can write our tangent line equation so in this case 80 plus 128 times x minus 2 next we want to approximate h of 1.9 so we can plug 1.9 in for the x um, and when we do that, we get 67.2. And we know that 67.2 uh, is going to be less than uh, the actual value because h prime is actually increasing on the interval from 1 to 3. So they're telling us each of the der derivatives are increasing. So because h prime is increasing, uh, that tells us that uh, it's going to be concave up. And the, if the graph is concave up, it's going to be um, the approximation is going to be below the actual value. Okay, so the approximation is less than h of 1.9. All right, part b, uh, write the third degree Taylor polynomial for h about x equals 2 and use it to approximate h of 1.9. So uh, we want to, we, we wrote the first degree, now we're going to move on to the third degree. So uh, the first two terms are still going to be the um, tangent line equation, and then from there, uh, we can build um, using the Taylor rule, which is the second derivative evaluated at 2 over 2 factorial plus x uh, times x minus 2 squared, and then the third derivative evaluated at 2 over 3 factorial x minus 2 cubed. So replace h prime of 2, h double prime of 2, with 488 over 3, and replace h, um, the third derivative evaluated at x gets replaced with 448, or sorry, third derivative evaluated at 2 gets replaced with 448 over 3. So, um, so they, uh, uh, these values uh, expressions uh, gets replaced with these values, and then if we simplify this a little further, uh, we will be able to arrive at a third degree Taylor polynomial. And then we can plug 1.9 into all the x's, and if we clean this up, we get 67.988. Okay, part C, uh, use the Lagrange error bound to show that the third degree Taylor polynomial uh, approximate h of 1.9 with error less than 3 times 10 to the negative 4. All right, so again, to review Lagrange error bound, Lagrange error bound tells us that um, if we find the, if we have the approximation and if we have the exact value, the approximation is, is, off, um, is off by no more than whatever this error bound is. Okay, um, the, the approximation is um, um, off of the exact value, no more than um, this uh, um, error bound. And the error bound is just the um, uh, m plus first derivative evaluated at some value z over m plus 1 factorial times x minus c to the m plus 1. So uh, because we're trying to uh, find uh, the error or the remainder for the third um, degree Taylor polynomial, then we're going to have to use the fourth derivative to help us evaluate the, the, um, um, uh, the error for the third degree. So n plus 1 gets replaced with 4 because n is 3, so 3 plus 1 is 4. Um, so, so the fourth, the fourth uh, derivative evaluated at some value z over 4 factorial. Uh, we know x is the value that we're uh, in question, which is 1.9. C is the center, so it's 2, so raised to the fourth as well. So now uh, we're trying to figure out what can we, what's going to be the safe upper bound uh, for the fourth derivative evaluated at some 
um, some z value. All right. Now, again, we're told that each of the derivatives is increasing on the interval from 1 to 3. Um, so what that means is um, if we're trying to determine the largest value for the fourth derivative between 1.9 and 2, well, we know that the fourth derivative evaluated at 2 is going to be, um, is going to be uh, 584 over 9. And so we know that this value must be greater than the fourth derivative evaluated at 1.9 because um, each of the derivatives is going to keep increasing um, between 1 and 3. So a safe upper bound uh, we know will be 584 over 9. And if we replace 584 over 9 in for the fourth derivative evaluated at z, we replace this with 584 over 9 divided by 4 factorial times 1.9 minus 2 raised to the fourth. And if we find whatever this error is, okay, this is the maximum error for this Taylor polynomial. Um, and the maximum error is only 2.7 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, this error is actually going to be less than 3 times 10 to the negative 4. So we've shown that um, this, uh, this third degree Taylor polynomial um, is um, more accurate than uh, it's not going to be off by. Um, more than 3 times 10 to the negative 4. In fact, it's going to be off by less than 3 times 10 to the negative 4. In fact, um, the most that it's going to be off by is going to be 2 times 2.7 times 10 to the negative 4, which we know is going to be less than uh, the error that is um, given in the problem. Okay. Let's look at number 6. All right, so we're given. Um, f of x equals e to the negative x squared. Write the first four non-zero um, uh, terms and the general term. Okay, so anytime you see general term, make sure you underline it. Uh, tendency is students sometimes forget to write out the general term. So if we want to write the, uh, the four non-zero terms for e to the negative x squared, okay, let's look at this e to the negative x squared. We may not know exactly um, uh, the, uh, the expansion series for e to the negative x squared. However, we do know um, what e to the x is, right? So we should have this memorized. e to the x, it can be expanded to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And then the general term, general term, general rule is x to the n over n factorial. So if this is um, uh, the Maclaurin polynomial about x equals 0, then I can just replace each of the x's with negative x squared to create my. Um, polynomial for um, e to the negative x squared. So each of the x's gets replaced with negative x squared. Okay? And if we do that, uh, we can also um, adjust our um, general term. So our general term, um, because of the fact that each term, uh, is every term is going to be alternating in signs, we have negative 1 to the n to represent that alternator. And then um, instead of x to the n, it's now x to the 2n over n factorial. Okay, part B, um, use the answer in part A to find the limit of this expression. So if I can replace f of x with, um, with the uh, um, polynomial that we found from e to negative x squared, then we should be able to clean this up and evaluate the limit. So I'm going to replace f of x with um, this polynomial here. Okay, so 1 minus x squared minus, here's the f of x. 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth over 2 minus x to the sixth over 6 plus dot dot dot. So um, we're going to say that um, whatever this um, infinite um, um, series is, we're just going to have a dot 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 to represent each of the terms that come after. All over x to the fourth. Now I'm going to see if I can clean this up before we evaluate the limit. Because if we want to evaluate the limit, the first thing we do is we plug in 0. But I'm going to clean this up first. All right, so if I clean this up, I'm going to distribute the negative through. If I distribute the negative through, I, can, I see that the 1's will cancel out, the x squared will cancel it out. We're left with negative x to the 4th over 2 plus x to the 6 over 6. And every term is going to have a higher degree than 6, right? 4, 6, 8, 12. So I'll put a dot, dot, dot there over x to the 4th. Now, if I uh, plug 0 into the numerator and denominator, I'll get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate form. 
So what if we can factor out x to the fourth from each of the terms? Right? We know that x to the fourth is going to be the lowest degree, and every term uh, is going to be higher than that. So if I factor out x to the fourth, I'm left with a constant of negative one half, and then every other term becomes x squared to the six over six, and then every term uh, basically uh, has a degree that is less than by four. And if now notice that I can cancel out the x to the fourth and I'm just left with negative one half plus x squared over six plus dot 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 and then every term after negative one half will have an x in it so if I plug zero in for x then every term will drop out leaving me with just the constant negative one half so my limit is negative one half okay part C um, write the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series for the definite integral of e to the negative t squared. So we know what um, uh, the Taylor series for e to the negative t squared is. So all we need to do is to find the integral of that that Taylor series that we found, or the McLaurin series that we found. So, so from part A, all we need to do is to find the definite integral um, for these. Uh, sorry, the the indefinite integral uh, for these terms. So go through power rule. So we're just going to apply power rule to e to the negative uh, for the um, polynomial expansion for e to the negative t squared. Uh, so 1 becomes x, t squared becomes t, x cubed over 3, uh, t to the 4th becomes t to the 5th over 10, and then when we plug in the upper and lower bound for x's, all the t's will convert to be x's. Okay. t to the 6th over 6 becomes t to the 7th over 7 times 6, so uh, becomes t to the 7th over 42, and then um, gets, uh, all the t's gets replaced with x's. Okay, so now um, we know that this represents the definite integral from 0 to x of e to the negative t squared. So if I want to find the definite integral from 0 to 1 half, um, notice the pattern here. I can just replace all the x's with 1 half. And when we do that, we only are asked about um, use the first two terms. So the first two terms uh, will just be 1 half minus 1 half cubed over 3. 1 half cubed is 1 eighth. 1 eighth divided by 3 will be 1 over 24. 1 half minus 1 over 24 is 11 over 24. So part D says explain why the estimate found in part C differs from the actual value by less than 1 over 200. Uh, so if we look at this here, each of these terms um, has alternating signs. So this series is actually a converging alternating series which means that in order to find the maximum error, all we need to do is to identify the first unused term. So we're using the first two terms to, uh, to give the approximation. So all we need is the third term. So the third term is x to the fifth over 10. So x to the fifth over 10, if I replace x with 1 half, I get 1 half to the fifth over 10. 1 half to the fifth is 1 over 32. 1 over 32 divided by 10, the same thing as 1 over 32 times 10, which is 1 over 320. So the maximum error it's going to be 1 over 320, which is going to be less than 1 over 200. Um, so we can, um, by the um, uh, alternating series uh, remainder test, uh, we know that the approximation um, using the first two terms um, is going to be, um, when we compare between this and the actual value, uh, the difference between these two is not going to be off by more than 1 over uh, 320.